Imagine yourself arriving by canoe to this incredible piece of unspoiled land. What would you see, smell, and hear? Perhaps trees, a river flowing through, deer frolicking through the forest. You really like this piece of land, so you think to yourself, I'm going to build myself a nice little home. And so you build a nice little cabin with a nice little porch, with a nice little view over the ocean, and you like this bit of land and this home so much that your friends decide that they want in on this great life too. So your friends arrive by canoe, and they build homes around yours. And one day, a man comes into the village with a wagon filled with skins. And he says that he'd like to build a factory on your land in exchange for some skins. And you think that it'll be a good way to support your living. And so you agree, and you build a glue factory and a store on your piece of land. Slowly, more people start arriving into this new town. And the town starts growing and growing until one day you all have a meeting and you decide that you'd like to build a city hall. And you get elected as mayor. And so your first mandate as mayor is to build a bunch of roads so that you can get around. And with the roads, you also decide to build a school so that kids can go to learn. And you also build a taco stand so that you have a place to go out and eat. And what else do you think that this city might need? Bike lanes, hospital. So we'll build some bike lanes, hospital, community centers, more factories, an airport, an express train, a church, power lines, high rises, a man-made island, until this, this is what your city looks like. How many people here would like to live in this city? There's no right or wrong answer. OK, a few of you. Does this city look familiar? It grew from this initial serene forest with the deer frolicking to this city with everything imaginable. It grew and grew and grew as more people moved into it. Now, this is a process called City on the Wall, and it was created by an architect called Stanley King in the 1970s. Most of the time, it's done with kids and youth coming up from the audience and drawing on a board. But today, these were drawings created by youth, high school aged youth, a few weeks ago. The idea of this process is to see how collaboratively we created that out of control, sprawling city. And that cities grow and grow and grow as more people move into them. Today, we know that in 2050, there is going to be 9 billion people living on Earth. 6 billion of those people will be living in cities. Today, we have 3 billion living in cities, which means that in just over 35 years, the number of people living in cities is going to be doubling. So what does that mean for cities? It means that cities that were suburbs of bigger cities are going to be sprawling out and out and out, and that cities themselves are going to be becoming denser and they're going to be growing up. And so picture that. Picture your own city doubling the amount of people. So double the amount of homes, double the amount of workplaces on your block, double the amount of things being sold in stores. And for us in our lives, it doesn't only mean more crowded sidewalks, but it means more pollution in the air, and it means more, a smaller water supply, for example. To make room for this change, there's huge proposals for monster developments, and there's huge infrastructural changes. As this change happens, it might even be hard to notice it. We may drive or bus by the same ch change happening every single day. So we may drive or bus by a high rise being built every day. But just as when we ourselves grow, we may not notice the change until it's complete. And you think, well, how did that get there? And throughout all of these changes, the most important aspect to keep in mind is urban sustainability. Now, sustainability is a word that undoubtedly we've all heard of, but it's become so overused and we hear it so often that it's lost its core meaning. So I ask you, what does sustainability mean and what does it look like? With the color green and pictures of trees and the recycling symbol aside, the true meaning of sustainability is living in a way that does not sacrifice the ability of future generations to live the same way. So that means having and creating systems where we continue to have water to drink, where we can have fresh and healthy food, and where we can all have well-rounded and happy lives. And not a situation where we end up having to send ourselves to space and rely on a little robot called Wally to clean up our mess. And sustainability also means 
creating a common vision for a place that we can picture our own kids could live in, and working together to make that vision possible. It means redesigning our city so that future generations don't encounter roadblocks like a depleted water supply. And throughout all of these changes, the question isn't how do we make the changes, but the question is how do we make all of the changes in our cities so that we create and maintain urban sustainability? We live in a world where plugging in our computers or other daily activities like getting food for a meal uses tons of resources and puts lots of emissions in the air. And even activities like driving to work or getting to school put emissions in the air. And if you think about it, isn't that kind of absurd that every time that we get to work or school, we damage the earth a little bit. With all of these actions and all of these impacts, we live in a way that requires five Earths. And as we all know, how many Earths do we have? One. So these infrastructural and other changes aren't only necessary because of the population increase to come, but these changes are necessary because of the way that we live in cities. We may think that making small adjustments is the only way of changing, but I ask you, can we change the way that we live? Instead of installing low energy light bulbs, can we create natural, uh, a space with natural light? Or instead of creating electric cars, can we create a city that's entirely car free? Although making small changes is definitely beneficial for the environment, in order to stop the projection of irreversible climate change and to make the planet livable for our own kids, it's the way that we live in cities that must be changed. So it's not just down to building out or building up anymore. It's down to creating a place that will be livable for future generations. And we do see these changes happening every day, but do we ever stop to question why is there a high rise being built just down the block? Or why are they building a giant movie theater complex behind my house? Our lack of stopping to ask these questions makes us feel as though we don't have an impact on what our, our cities look like, when in fact it's the opposite. We forget that cities are built for people, and so as citizens of the cities, we're the most important ones to have a say in what our cities look like. It's an opportunity to be empowered and to be engaged in making a difference in the place that we live. I know that for me, I didn't know anything about changes that are happening in cities until one day I happened to go on a field trip to, uh, to a uh, forum about urban sustainability. And there I saw pictures of all these cities around the world that were entirely unsustainable and that had grown and grown with huge human populations. And I also learned about urban sustainability in my city. And I thought, this is the stuff that we need to be learning in schools. This is the stuff that's so relevant to the world around us. And these are the things that are part of our future. And so a few of my friends and I got together and we created a conference called Planet Earth about urban sustainability for high school students. And we had a whole bunch of workshops on topics from backyard chickens to environmental policy in schools. And then to turn that new knowledge into action, we had a process called co-design. Now, co-design is a process where there's one artist to a group of about 10 participants, who can be anyone from kids to youth to seniors to adults. And although a lot of the time these participants don't know each other, they enter the conversation together. And the artist asks them questions like, what would you see, smell, hear, touch in your ideal sustainable city? And what would you like to be doing? The brilliant thing about co-design is that it focuses on that, what would you like to be doing in your ideal sustainable life, rather than asking the typical, the typical question of, what would you like to see? If you remember City on the Wall at the beginning, where I asked, what would you like to see? That's where we got this big, sprawling, ugly city with all this stuff. But in co-design, where we ask, what would you like to be doing? That's where we start to see a sustainable city. And so here are some of the drawings that youth created at the conference. And you can see a whole bunch of ideas from solar powered buses to outdoor group aerobic classes or a community, a community garden work party with chickens behind the school. At the conference, these drawings are presented to city planners so that they could implement these ideas of youth into their own designs. Co-design, though, most of the time, is used to design a particular space. For example, does anybody recognize this spot? Robson Square, Square yes. This is Robson Square. And it was, it's a key spot in Vancouver that was designed through co-design. 
In the 1970s, an architect, Stanley King, took a group of youth on a site walk through what used to be a parking lot, and he asked them, what would you like to see in this exact spot? And they went through the co-design process, and they gave in their ideas. And some of them may have even seemed far-fetched, from planting trees in the middle of downtown to building an outdoor dome skating rink. Yet, we can see many similarities between the amazing architect, Arthur Erickson's final design of Robson Square, and the ideas that youth gave. For example, looking at these before and after shots of Robson Square, we can see that it became a nature and a pedestrian-oriented area and that, in fact, an outdoor dome skating rink was built. Not such a far-fetched idea after all. And so through co-design, it gives participants an opportunity to be empowered and to be engaged to design with their senses. It puts a group of people and forces them to work together and collaborate their ideas to think about what a sustainable life means. And in the end, I think that's what change is all about. I think it's a perfect example of how Uniting all of our ideas is so much more powerful than just my idea or just your idea. I know that at times I felt that change has to come from the top down through influential people, but it can very well and sometimes must form through the grassroots, through individuals like each of us. As citizens, we have the ability to let designers know what we want our cities to look like. We have the ability to call them up and to give our ideas of what new developments should look like. Attend an open house for a new development and pitch in your ideas and don't be afraid to speak out about your opinion. Be involved in creating the future that you want to see with creating the parks, the recreational spaces, the workspaces, the residential areas. And there's even a youth manual online created by Stanley King and a co-design artist, Susan Ng Chung, that you can refer to as an amazing resource to create your own co-design drawings in your neighborhood. But above all of that, I think it's in taking action that we realize there is no set way that the future has to look like. So why not contribute to it? And why not make the future one that we would all love to live in? This change is something to be empowered and to feel excited about. It's something to feel optimistic about. You know that feeling in the pit of your stomach where you think about there's so much change that has to happen and there's so much that has to be done? That's just incoming change-itis, and it can be easily cured by taking collaborative action. Because together, we form that sprawling, ugly city on the wall that was entirely out of control. Together, we make cities run the way they do every day. And together, we can redesign and reinvent the way that we live for future generations. And it's with that collaboration, that excitement for change, and that focus on making the planet livable for us and our kids, that together will create the ultimate urban sustainability. Thank you.